enter the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interest is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the Belvedere Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having the date, time, and place thereof posted with the star ledger and express times as submitted to the town clerk of the town of Belvedere on January 16, 2022. Next slide, please. Mr. Ackerman? Here. Mr. Blum? Mr. Costantino? Here. Dr. Zuppis? Here. Mr. Duckworth? Kennedy? Here. Mr. Scott? Here. Mr. Broca? Stefan? Here. Mr. Tai? Here. Mr. Weidlich? Mr. Scott? Okay. Um, committee reports, starting with the ad hoc want me to start and then Absolutely. you can add? <laughs> um, so we met, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, I guess, beginning of August, I believe, right? Yeah. So was it the 8th? No, that's... Because that's in the nice. last meeting, we talked about the fields and where we wanted to go, and we felt that we needed to have a smaller committee to really hash this out. And um, a lot of the concerns had to do with the fact that it's such a big price tag, and we have the feasibility study going on at the same time, and... You know, but what we don't want to do nothing. You know, we want to definitely do something. So we spent some time, and I sent out those notes. Um, hopefully, you got them. Um, starting with the track. You know, the track is can't even really call it a track. And maybe if we go there first with some funds that we already have, and then we have the grant writer involved um, going forward and trying to secure more grants for the bigger projects that we want to do and do some more fundraising before we have to go to taxpayers and referendum and things like that. So right now, just looking at the track. Add to that. Yeah, I, I would. I had an opportunity, and I think I shared it in one of my emails, uh, to speak with the grant writer. If we met on Wednesday, maybe the following Monday, I forget the exact timeline. Um, we had asked if it was possible for her to come to, the, to this meeting just to hear some of the discussion. Um, she couldn't make it tonight, but she will be at our next ad hoc meeting. Um, with that, we had a we had a great great conversation. Um, she has, in fact, worked with some districts with getting grant money. Um, I know, Doc, you've talked about it for for many years about you know whether it's a St. Luke's or something like that. Um, she actually sent me a, a list of possible destinations that we can be looking at. Um, she said more for informational, and then when she comes to the ad hoc meeting, she'll then dial it in a little bit more specifically to what we're looking at, whether it's starting with the track, whether it's the you know, we had talked about if we're going to put a track down there first and nothing else, looking at putting irrigation out there, running the power, if we're going to eventually expand on that. Um, and she said that she wants to hear from the board members, and then she'll start to really look specifically at what our needs are. Um, it was a great conversation, and we, we just started, as we were chatting, she, she also said, um, you know, she had some stuff that I forwarded to Mr. Bartow just yesterday afternoon about uh, uniforms. I know we do a pretty good job of updating our uniforms, but there's grant money for that. Um, the NFL has a couple of big grants um, that they do for working with the youth. So uh, just from that meeting we had with the ad hoc, it, it turned into a very good conversation. Hopefully we'll be able to see some benefits from that. Questions from those that weren't at the ad hoc committee or concerns or not focusing on the track or um. How about making a starting with a list of of because I know uh, I have a son that plays soccer and if that soccer field if it rains, it's not playable at the one end. So how about just start with a list with I, I'm sure you are, but um, starting with a list of things that would deem some of these games unplayable, and then starting with you know whether it's the field hockey, the baseball, soccer, football, things that are are that are in desperate need and that would um, cause a game to be canceled due to weather or a problem with the, the field or, or what have you. Um, also, too, I know, I mean, <laughs> with the football, I know they run a generator to, to the, the school, school board or the scoreboard. So, you know, those are things maybe start there with a laundry list and then just see what we can tackle one at we a can time. Tackle. 
it also would be a good idea to look at the sports, the number of kids that are in the sports. For example, I know track is up and coming. Mm -hmm. There's a lot, so that would be a good place. Football's on the decline. I'd rather put the money into the up and coming sports where we have more students than sports where we don't have a lot of students. And I think that's when we were talking, we talk a lot about the track because of that. I think we have a high number of students in, uh, in track off top of head. It was around 40-ish, or it's been, is, you know, a good solid amount. Um, and one of the things that I commented on, you know, in that meeting is, even with really no track history, our track team has done phenomenal. And you start to think if you gave Coach Devine a better track, what the possibilities could be. And I think that's why track the track was our, our starting point. We talked about at the ad hoc committee other issues too, like, okay, an, an, the next timeline that you wanted to try to meet and what we can look at. Um, we talked about more of a five-year plan, right? Correct. So um, you want to just talk to everybody about yeah, that? Yeah, so, you know, instead of trying to do everything all at once and, and shutting fields down and, Again, you know, uh, Mrs. Scott had talked about just the overall cost of it, doing things in phases. So, um, and we're not married to any of these ideas, but for example, um, started with the track, but then possibly then adding a new field in the track the following year or two. Um, and I think, and I don't want to speak for everybody, but I think the consensus out of the committee was to stay away from turf and rather go with a, a, a new grass field and to be able to give our maintenance department the, the tools and support they need to continue to, to maintain that grass field. Um, again, we t one of the members, and I don't want to, again, point anybody out, but talked about the maintenance of the field just from personal experience recently, you know, and, and the machines that you need. And if uh, a student gets sick on the field, then you got to cut that piece of turf out. And, you know, you start to really think about the cost of that. Um, it, it gets expensive, you know, and are we better off, and, you know, from – Someone who's had, you know, three children play sports, and um, I prefer them to play on grass rather than turf, just because of injuries and, and the, the the absorption your body takes when you hit turf. Um, again, that's a personal preference, but I think when we had the discussion, a lot of the committee members agreed with that. So that'd be sort of that'll be the plan, and then how do we how can we look at that in a five year plan? And I think the grant writer can really help us if there's ways to get there. So the grant writer will be coming to the next ad hoc committee. Next ad hoc committee, she will be there. She'll be there virtually, there we'll but she'll be in attendance. Any other questions about the field? All right, um, curriculum. Uh, I sent the notes out for curriculum. It, we spent most of the time talking about a lot of the new um, updating of policies. Um, we talked a little bit about that at the goals meeting as well. It all kind of tied together, but we talked about cell phones, discipline points, um, Athletic grades kept up to uh, 60 uh, academic rigor. We talked about uh, schedules in both buildings and staffing needs where we had to fill some some holes and, and things like that. So I did send out those notes. Um, questions, discussion? I think, I think that summarized it um, very well. The other thing I'll just mention publicly because I think we need to start talking about it is we're talking about preschool for next year, where it could be potentially four preschool classes and two kindergarten classes, which would mean we would likely have to start looking at Third Street again. So um, we already had those discussions. We had in the curriculum um, meeting. Also met with Mr. Barrick to start to talk about that, just you know, as that seems to be looming as a large possibility for us next year if that fourth pre-K comes in. All right. So now we have personnel, which we would have to go into executive for. Motion to go to executive session for personnel. Second. Second. All in favor? All right. Motion made to go into executive session for personnel committee updates. Any discussion held by the board, which need not remain confidential, will be made public as soon as practical. Minutes of this executive session will not be disclosed until the need for confidentiality no longer exists. The board will reconvene in public session at the conclusion of the closed session in approximately 15 minutes. Eric, you tell me when. We're good? Okay.
The New Jersey Public Meetings Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interests is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the Belvedere Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having the date, time, and place thereof posted with the Star Ledger and Express Times and submitted to the Town Clerk of the Town of Belvedere on January 15, 2016. Uh, meeting will be live streamed at www.belvedersd.org. Flag salute. Roll call. Mr. Ackerman? Hold on. Mr. Costantino? Here. Dr. Zuppa? Here. Mr. Duffy? Here. Mr. Kennedy? Mr. Scott? Here. Mr. Stephan? Here. Mr. Brophy? Mr. Chai? Here. Mr. Weiser? Mr. Scott? All right. Now, public participation. Months ago, you hired our members at one rate. Two months ago, they worked at those rates. One month ago, they were paid at the rate they were voting for you. We simply ask them to pay their members at the rate they were voting for you. Stand up. Hi, Joe Roth, uh, Belvedere Town Council and liaison to the school board. Under the heading of uh, sharing information, I don't just wanted to bring you up to date. I am overseeing a project in Belvedere to create a bike-friendly grid throughout the town uh, uh, on a number of streets, uh, probably a few miles when it's all completed. Uh, the first phase of this uh, grid is going to be right out here on Oxford Street, a uh, project funded by AARP. Talk about grants. We're very lucky to get that. Now, there's been some talk about whether we could put in a full uh, dedicated bike lane on Oxford Street or do something else. Um, our engineers, after a thorough sur uh, survey, have determined that bike lanes going in and out on Oxford Street uh, could not be done. It's just too narrow a street and with pinch points at the Q uh, tree, as well as restrictions in front of schools. It's just not feasible for us to do that. And so we will, will be using uh, bike uh, sharrows which are basically bike symbols that will be put in the middle of the streets on both sides, in and out. And if any of you go through Hackettstown on 46 on Main Street, you'll see them right in the middle of Hackettstown. So it's very common to be used in streets uh, that uh, can't afford uh, large lanes. This will be starting hopefully over the next couple of months. Uh, and I bring that to your attention because there is also discussion uh, regarding parking on the other side of the street. Uh, it is just Session at this point, uh, there's no ordinance written, it, written or, or even a draft, but I just wanted to make you aware of it that it is something that's been percolating. And as you go into your long-term plans, at some point we need to wrestle with this situation. So that's really why I bring it to your attention. Also, along with the shadows, I'll be sending out cards. Belvedere, and basically it'll explain what are bike showers and what are your responsibilities as a driver and as a, as a bike rider. And the whole reason for the program is to promote more bike riding around the town, uh, be safer for both, both adults and children, as well as welcome uh, more bike uh, clubs to come into town, spend some money, and enjoy, and enjoy both. Um, in talking with the chief of police, he is very interested to reinstill the uh, bike safety program that he did with the schools prior to COVID. And so hopefully he will come be contacting you all or you him to get that up and running again. And another concern with, with parking and street safety, as you know, is, is the drop off of school buses in the front of the building. So to the extent your long-term plan addresses that, 
we'd like to work with you to see how that could be done. Um, we are getting some information on a uh, Safe Streets for All grant uh, that may be available. I don't know very much about it now, but if I find that it has some applicability uh, to the school bus situation and maybe can we can work together uh, to develop this grant and share some funds to do it, I'll bring it to your attention. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any other public participation? I have a question for the gentleman from town council here. So this bike path or bike, what was it called that you had? A bike? Okay. And that's going to come down Oxford Street past both the schools? Okay. Well, just my opinion. Just, just off the top of my head, I could be totally wrong. But I would actually discourage that because if you've seen how much traffic is out here, during what it's not just buses it's parents too there's no real parking and i would not advise anybody to ride their bike past the school in a recreational thing while all this traffic is going on so i would okay I would make it safer by making a detour around Oxford Street. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right, thank you. I do like the idea. I just don't like it for all the traffic and it's just a mess. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Thank you for your presentation. Any other public participation? Last call. All right, moving new correspondence. Okay, no correspondence. All right, superintendent's report. Okay, I have a few, a few things. Um, I'd like to start out my comments tonight, just uh, thanking the summer staff that, that worked all summer, starting out with our administrative assistants. Um, we have a couple of people in new roles this year, um, specifically uh, Lori Hesketh and Shonda Collum, learning new roles and, and doing extremely well. Um, walking through the main office right now is, uh, is really nice. Everybody seems very uh, happy and calm. I know that'll change come probably Monday morning. Uh, but a very, very nice. Uh, Ms. Spron's moving over to guidance, uh, already doing an outstanding job. And then, of course, um, Ms. Godlescu, who um, is just a rock for LV Elementary School. She does an awesome job. Um, got a chance to chat with Helen this morning. Um, so they're all, they did an excellent job this summer, and we appreciate all their hard work. Um, also, I'd like to thank the administrative team. Um, I felt this summer was our most productive summer as a team that we've had in quite a, quite a few years. I think there's a general excitement between us to get, get started. Um, we did some great brainstorming. Um, I'd really like to comment on, first of all, Mr. Bartow's effort on the, on the new policies, the, the point system that he put together that's going out for discipline. Um, personally, I think it's an excellent document. I think a lot of people agree. Okay. Mr. Carabina, same thing with um, what he put together um, for the elementary school. And then, uh, you, know, com you know, kudos to Dr. McKinney for just consistently meeting with the staff this summer and, and really taking in a lot of the ideas. Um, we just had our instructional council meeting. We talked a lot about the morale survey. Um, I think as an administrative team, we took what was in that survey to heart and uh, really are dedicated to, to improving morale in the overall uh, school. Um, I'd also like to thank everybody who was involved with the summer programs. We've gotten a lot of positive feedback on our summer programs this year, specifically the sports camps for the youth. Um, I think that was a great program, great idea that came out of our one ad hoc committee, and I uh, look forward to continuing to do that in the future. So thanks to the coaches who who are here, uh, our, our students who came in to help, and then obviously all the, all the students that participated. Um, and last and certainly not least, um, I want to thank our custodial staff and our maintenance staff. This has been a tough summer. They truly have been down one person all summer. Um, we just have somebody who started last week. Got an opportunity to walk through the buildings this 
this afternoon. Um, the buildings look great. We're ready to go. We're ready to open. Um, in fact, I would probably comment that given the short handedness, it's probably the best the buildings have looked in quite some time. So they did an outstanding job. Um, we're going to continue our tradition that Mr. Swanaville started many years ago, the Friday before school starts. Um, we're closing the district for the day so they can have some well-deserved time off. Uh, a lot of people put in a lot of extra time. So um, I want to thank everybody. It's been great. Um, it's been a great summer. Um, I think we are finally ready to move past the COVID time and, and get back to what is normal and if there is such a normal thing anymore. Um, I know the question of, of COVID and what's going to happen is right now it's if you test positive, you have to quarantine. Um, otherwise, no quarantining, including if you're a close contact, you just have to watch your symptoms and, and things like that. Um, I know some districts are opting to go masked. We are not. We're going to stay uh, mask optional for staff and students. Um, I think we're in a good spot, and I appreciate all the efforts that everybody's put in. Um, opening day next week, we have our staff returning on Monday. Uh, for two days of in-service, Monday and Tuesday, we are doing our more traditional opening meeting Tuesday morning. Um, I will be in Harmony on Monday morning for that meeting. Um, I wasn't sure if I'd have a principal in place in time, so that's the way we scheduled it. And our students are back on Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, early dismissal on Friday, and then back into the, to the swing of things the following week. Back to school nights. Uh, the seventh is Belvedere High School, and the eighth is the elementary school. And then uh, I know information has gone out about that, and then more will be coming. Um, this morning, I had the opportunity to attend a school security meeting countywide, uh, made up of a handful of superintendents, school security officers, state police, and local police officers. Um, for those of you that have been around a while, you certainly remember and know Chief Riley. Chief Riley led the meeting. Um, it, was a, it was an outstanding meeting, and it was a lot of good reminders of what we've gotten away from over the last couple of years because of COVID when it comes to so school security, and just nice reminders about the protocols that we need to have in place. Um, you know, school security is always our main priority in making sure the building is safe for our staff and our students. So um, opening day, I'll, I'll take some time to review that, some of the things that, some of the great pieces we have in place. Um, and it's always interesting when state troopers from around the state come talk about what's in place Warren County wide, and we are far and above uh, beyond what most counties in the state do. Um, most counties in the state wouldn't even have a meeting like this morning. So. It's a great meeting. We're going to meet um, every other month just to continue that, that conversation. Uh, from board points, I'll have the September meetings list uh, out by Friday. I'll also have my goals presentation updated by Friday. Uh, we were able to meet as an administrative team over the last uh, week or two and just to solidify some of the more concrete numbers, which I'll share with everybody. You'll also be seeing some policy changes. Uh, number one is on academic slash sports participation. Uh, we have a nice piece that we're going to put in there about a two-week check on it for all the students to make sure no one is failing. Um, so that'll be coming out. Hopefully, I'll have that short up too also by Friday. And then the feasibility study, we still have not heard anything from the state. I know that that question gets asked a lot. Um, I did talk to um, Dr. Ken Green last week. As, you know, we've, we've been in discussion with using him as a consultant, um, and we both agreed it's always great when the state makes you hit a deadline and do things very quickly, and then we wait until they are ready to <laughs> give us the results. Um, that being said, I am extremely excited for next week. I'm excited to see the staff and the students back in a more normal setting. I think we're, we're going to be in a great spot this year, and I, I look forward to leading us back to, to the greatness that I think we can become. So those are my comments. I just had a question about um, with the opening of school. It's been free lunch because of COVID. It is no longer free lunch, right? Correct. Okay. So did that that went out to parents? Like, do they know they have to put money on pay schools again? And I'm not asking you specifically, Shelly. I'm just I don't know if we. There was a message. There was. I'm a, just making sure that there was something sent out because I think that parents are going. Kenny, that goes yeah, out it's every part of year. the high school one, but I don't know if it did go out for the elementary school. Now that I think of it, because it was part of Dr. McKinney's welcome back letter okay, for the high right. school. But the one thing I did think about that is, should there be directions sent out to people to do that? Because so many people haven't done haven't that done before. Haven't done essentials. I have to add money to my well, kids' account. Yeah. Like, just a reminder, yeah. I think, needs to go out. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll take care of that. Yeah. Is there still the old-fashioned free and reduced lunch for needy yeah. families? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and there's instruction in the high school on how to do that. Okay. 
we have any questions about the superintendent's report or anything you'd like to add? All right, moving to policy. Um, there's quite a few uh, policy uh, readings here, first readings. Numbers one through 12, motion to approve policy items numbers one through 12. Motion. Discussion. Discussion on any of the policy items. I had a question on one and I thought I marked which one, but I'm not sure if it's 11 or 12. It's one of the safety ones. There's a paragraph that talks about um, parents and students would know prior to drills and stuff. Like, are we talking like the day of or it's just you know they're going to happen? Like, I was not quite clear on that because I know you always inform us that a drill took place and everything was just a drill like after the fact. But there is a thing about prior notification in one of them. And I was like, which is good but yet bad because you don't want the kids to know. You want them to take it serious. So I wasn't sure if that just meant putting something out in the beginning that these things will be happening or if it's something you're supposed to do the same week, like it'll be coming. I'm trying to see where exactly you are. I forget which, I, I thought I marked it on my page and then I didn't. But it is after. But it was it's about a, It's drill. definitely after. I, I'll i mark that as something to look at. Okay. Um, we actually talked a little bit about that today, the security meeting as well, um, about notifying parents and, and how to best do that. So I'll, I'll mark that in, in my weekly report next week I'll I'll address that because I thought what yeah. there's prior notification I was like okay but then I'm thinking maybe it's just at the beginning of the year you say these are the kind of drills that the children right. may ha like you know what I mean right. kind of thing versus yeah. I think that's what I have to do the other thing that came up and I'm actually glad you brought that up Ms. Duckworth is um, reminding parents that our school security plan is a confidential document and as much as parents may want to see it and know where kids are going it's it's off limits to parents um, for obvious reasons. Um, there was a conversation today uh, about reunification. You know, uh, there are five schools in the county that are marked for reunification. Um, we wouldn't know if, for some reason, there was an incident here at one of the Belvedere schools. We wouldn't know which one of those five we were going to until we were on our way. Um, so just those kinds of things, just to remind parents that. We recognize and we respect that you n want to know what's going on, but we have to protect the kids first and foremost. Um, I guess there was a, an incident last December in, in, um, at North Horn High School that was talked about where um, there was a, an alleged gun in the building and they locked the building down and within five minutes there were 300 parents at the building. Um, and getting... I guess very upset that they weren't getting any information out of anybody, and then the the state trooper in charge finally came out and said, "We're literally going room to room looking for a gun." I I know you guys want information. We have a job to do, and, and the safety of the staff and the students is is primary. As soon as we can, we'll come out and address it. So it's just so it was a good remind. Like those are the reminders that we have to remember that, you know, if you know, God forbid, we're ever in a situation that, as a parent, and I'm a parent of three, so I understand completely. What you want and what you're going to get are going to be very different. But I'll look into that and I'll get back to you on that. Yeah, one. it's not yep. like really clear, and I could not that people are going to read them, but mm -hmm. if they do, they'll be like, "Well, I was supposed to be notified," and I just wanted to make sure that we were right. covered where we are, because I know there's always an all call after the fact that there was a drill and it was just a drill and whatnot, and maybe we need to go over like those specifics with parents again and just remind them, saying the lights mean this. The you know. Right. Any other discussion on policy items? All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any no's? Abstentions? I'm moving to personnel. Now, uh, motion to approve personnel items. It's 13 to, there's a lot, 13 to 41, and then it's 41 A and B. Like, there there was an addendum that you should have received today, uh, Shelly gave out. Motion? Motion. 41 C. Aye. All right. Um, discussion. Give everybody a minute to look at your addendum in case there's a discussion.
Okay, roll call. Mr. Ackerman? Dr. Pino? Yes. Dr. Gutter? Yes. Dr. Work? Yes, abstain 24 and 41. Kennedy? Scott? Yes. Stephan? Yes. Ty? Yes. Okay, moving to education items, uh, 42 to 53, and uh, if it's now, that's a 50, yeah, 53, there's a B also on your addendum. Okay, so take a look at that. Motion. Motion. Any discussion on those education items? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. No's? Abstentions? We're moving to business items. 54 through 59. Um, 55 does have an addendum, some different um, or additional names. Different names there. Take a look at that. Motion? Motion. All in favor? Aye. No's? Abstentions. Okay. Continuing business. Did I miss any? Any other continuing business? All right, new business. I mean, I know it's the start to a new year here. and We've been talking a lot about those things, so I think that might be why we really aren't seeing much of a conversation, questions, anything else that we haven't been talking about that we want to focus on. I would just like to thank all the staff for their input on the survey that survey. went around and opening so many questions, some that were known, some that weren't known, and helping the board and superintendent and the rest of the administration be able to move forward and for working with them in trying to help some of these situations. Public participation number two. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. <laughs> That's a record. What do I get for that record? <laughs>